Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're talking about the brain in a vat scenario. It's like the evil demon scenario, but with a little more modern twist to it. So, instead of supposing there's an evil demon trying to deceive you for who knows what reason, suppose that there's a brain in a vat. This brain is plugged into a computer simulation, like in the Matrix. It's fed electrical signals that perfectly mimic the electrical signals sent by the sense organs of a human being walking around the world having normal experiences, right? So the way that you find out about the world is that your sensory organs get input, uh, light hits your eyes, sound waves hit your ears, etc., And then those organs, your eyes, your ears, nose, mouth, etc., send electrical signals to your brain that your brain then interprets and translates into the experiences that you have. So your brain just gets electrical signals sent from various organs. That's how the brain constructs your experience of the world around you. So let's suppose a brain's hooked up to a computer that sends Electrical signals the exact same way. The brain can't tell the difference. An electrical signal is an electrical signal, you know. So the brain is sent these electrical signals that are the exact same signals it, the brain would be sent if it were inside a human skull with functioning organs in, the, in a human body that's walking around the world having normal experiences. You know, seeing tables and chairs and stuff. All right, well, in this scenario... The brain is going to think that it's a person with a human body walking around, eating lunch, uh, sitting in philosophy class, or at least sitting and watching philosophy class lectures, uh, doing all the things that we normally do. That's what the brain's going to think, because that's all it's ever gotten. It's just gotten these signals as if it were a person with a human body walking around. And so that's what the brain's going to believe it is. So now, all right, we've looked at that. Now imagine that the brain is fed the exact same electrical signals that your brain has been sent by your sense organs throughout your life. So throughout your whole life, your brain has been sent electrical signals by your sensory organs. Your eyes and ears have been sending electrical signals to your brain since you were born. So imagine that this brain in the vat has been sent those exact same electrical signals at the exact same times throughout the brain's life. So the brain in the vat has all of the perceptions that you do, all of the memories that you do, all of the beliefs that you do, it, the brain has had your exact experiences as far as that brain thinks, as far as the brain is concerned. It's had all of your exact experiences. The brain believes that it is enrolled in uh, Philosophy 1500, Major Issues in Philosophy, looking at PowerPoint slides on this lecture video, and learning about brains and vets. That's what the brain thinks it's doing because it's the brain in the vat is getting the same electrical signals that your brain is getting right now. So the brain in the vat has all of the same experiences as you and therefore has all of the same evidence as you. The brain in the vat has all the same evidence of an external world that you have. From the brain's perspective, it's had the exact same experiences that you've had. There's no difference whatsoever between what it's like to be you and what it's like to be the brain in the vat. The brain, you and the brain in the vat have the exact same ex inter internal experiences going on. You have the exact same evidence. So here's the question. How do you know that you're not the brain in the vat? How do you know that you are a person walking around in a human body having human 
body life experiences rather than being a brain in a vat sitting and floating in a vat being fed electrical signals as if it was going around having human body life experiences how do you know well the an- it looks like the answer might be that you don't because it seems perfectly possible for there to be brains in vats. We understand that electrical signals are sent to the brain. Uh, The technology for sending electrical signals to the brain isn't that far-fetched. I mean, people are working on trying to get higher tech prosthetics and things that connected directly to the brain. The idea that we can decode and send electrical signals to a brain is not that crazy. not that far-fetched it's plausibly a technology we could have at some point in the future so we can't rule out the existence of brains and vats just a priori uh just from logic alone internally uh we need something more than that we need some sort of evidence some sort of empirical evidence a posterior act, empirical evidence. But it's not clear what that could possibly be. In fact, it looks like there couldn't possibly be any such evidence because any empirical evidence you get is going to come from your sensory experiences. And as we've said, the brain in the vat gets exactly the same sensory data the exact same sensory input. So the brain of the bat has the exact same sensory experience that you do. So any empirical evidence that you have that you aren't a brain in a vat, you would also have all that evidence if you were a brain in a vat. So it looks like nothing that you experience could ever tell you you're not a brain in a vat. It's all stemming from electrical signals sent to your brain and a brain in a vat could have those same electrical signals sent to its brain, sent to it. So none of your experiences give you any actual evidence that you aren't a brain in a vat. And so it looks like you can't know that you aren't a brain in a vat. If you were a brain in a vat, you would have all the exact same thoughts, beliefs, memories, perceptions, etc. that you do. So we can't rule out just closed eyes in our heads, math and logic, figure out that we're not a brain in a vat. And we can't get empirical evidence from the world that we're not a brain in a vat because we could have all that exact same evidence if we were a brain in a vat. So there's no way to prove to ourselves that we're not a brain in a vat. There's no way that we can know that we aren't a brain in a vat because we would have the exact same experience either way. We'd have all the exact same evidence either way. So none of our experiences are evidence for one over the other. If we would have all the exact same sensory experiences as brains and vats or as regular human people, then that means none of our experiences tell us that we're regular human people, not brain and vat, not a brain and a vat. We would have the exact same experiences either way. So it looks like we can't even in principle have any evidence that we aren't brains and vats. So you don't know that you're not a brain and a vat, the skeptic argues. You don't know that you're not a brain and a vat. But here's the thing. Once it's possible that your brain in a vat being fed electrical signals, there's no need for those signals to match up with the outside world in any way whatsoever. Those signals could be anything the computer decides they are. Doesn't have to be at all like what an actual person with a human body is experiencing. So if you're a brain in a vat, once it's possible that you're a brain in a vat, 
that you have no information about the external world. Because there's no reason to think, there's no evidence that the electrical signals being sent to your brain line up with the world outside your vat at all. So if you're a brain in a vat, you have no information about the external world. The external world could be totally different. So tables, chairs, birds, plants, your friends and family, you have no evidence that any of those exist, that any of those are real. Because if you're a brain in a vat, then the signals you're being sent could have nothing to do with what the world is actually like. So all you have are the signals that are sent, that were sent to the brain in the vat. But the signals might not represent the way the world is, actually is. And so the world outside the vat may not have chairs, it may not have trees, it may not have people, planets, anything remotely similar to what you've experienced. And once we accept that possibility, once we accept that we can't know that we aren't brains and vats, once we accept that for all we know, we could be brains and vats, then for all we know, we are brains and vats being sent signals that have nothing to do with what the world's actually like. And so for all you know, your experience based on the electrical signals sent to your brain, either by a computer or by sense organs, might have nothing to do with what the world is like. For all you know, your sensory experience is wildly mistaken. And so, if you're a brain in a vet, everything you think you know about the external world is wrong. It, none of your experiences were real if you're a brain in a vet. None of the things you think you've seen or heard really exist. So if you can't be certain you're not a brain in a vet, if you don't know that you're not a brain in a vet, then you can't be certain about anything in the external world. You don't know anything about the external world. So if you don't know that you're not a brain in a vat, you don't know anything about the external world. If, for all you know, you might be a brain in a vat, because you'd have the same evidence either way, then, for all you know, all of your experiences are false. There are no chairs. There are no dogs. There are no people. There are no human beings. <coughs> so here's the core argument. It's basically the same as the dreaming argument. It's like, look, you don't know that you're not a brain in a vet. And we looked at the defense, the justification for that premise. Uh, you know, you would have all the same evidence either way. So none, you would have all the same experiences either way. And so none of your experiences are evidence that you aren't a brain in a vet. And so you have no evidence that you're not a brain in a vet. And so therefore you don't know that you're not a brain in a vet. But if you don't know that you're not a brain in a vet, then you don't know anything about the external world. Once it's possible that you're a brain in a vet, it's possible that you're a brain in a vet who's being sent signals that have nothing to do with the way the world's actually like, or what the world's actually like. And so if you don't know you're not a brain in a vet, if you can't rule that out, then you don't know anything about the external world. You can't rule out the possibility that you're a brain in a vat being sent signals that are wildly wrong. And therefore, you don't know anything about the external world. You don't know that you're not a brain in a vat. And if you don't know that, then you don't know anything about the external world. So you don't know anything about the external world. At its core, it's a pretty simple argument. Uh, it's just a lot of work goes into justifying those two premises. But at core, it's a pretty simple argument. So final point for the pro skepticism set of uh, lecture videos for the day. The ultimate point is if we can't prove that we aren't in one of these skeptical scenarios, if we can't prove that we aren't being deceived by an evil demon or dreaming or a brain in a vat or whatever, then we can't prove that the external world even exists. If we don't know we aren't in one of these scenarios, then we don't know anything about the external world. 
even our most basic beliefs, like that we have hands, come from our sensory experience. You believe you have hands because you see them and you feel them. And you, I guess, could, I mean, hands don't smell like anything, but you could smell them, I guess. Uh, but you sent, have sensory experiences of your hands. That's why you know that you have hands or why we think you know that you have hands. You found out about your own hands through your sensory experiences. So sensory experience is how we find out a lot. It's how we find out everything about the external world, everything about the world outside of your own mind, you learned about through sensory experience. And so if we can't prove that our sensory experiences are reliable, if we can't prove that our sensory, our senses aren't being wildly deceived, then we can't prove even our most basic beliefs, like that we have hands, because we can't provide any evidence for them. We can't, all our evidence for those beliefs comes from sensory experience. And so if we can't prove that our sensory experiences are reliable, then we can't prove that all our beliefs aren't built on a big hallucination. And so if someone is skeptical about the external world, it looks like there's nothing you can do to convince them they're wrong. But they have a lot of arguments to try to convince you that you should be skeptical. There's no evidence you can give a skeptic about the external world to convince them they should stop being skeptical about the external world. Because whatever experience, whatever you say to them, they think they could be hallucinating that. And so it's not possible to give them any kind of evidence that they're not a brain in a vat or dreaming or deceived by an evil demon or whatever. So once someone's an external world skeptic, it looks like there's maybe nothing you can do to convince them that they're wrong. And there are several arguments that you should be an external world skeptic. So it's not clear how you could get out of external world skepticism, how you can avoid this conclusion. But one person, G.E. Moore, has tried to avoid the conclusion. And we'll look at G.E. Moore's argument in the next video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the last video.